a second here. Can you tell us? Well, I think we're live. So I hope we're live in the correct group and not somebody else's because I'm an admin on a lot of fucking groups. Dude, you can stream into any group. You don't need to be an admin. Well, isn't that crazy? As long as you're in the group, you can stream. Oh, I, I have Nuts, no idea. What they need to fix that shit quick smart. They, they definitely do. So wh whatever group we're in, hopefully it's my own. We're here with the sales snipers. I don't even need to introduce them, but I will anyways. I think you guys may know them. If you guys love sales, if you guys love money, these are the two guys you need to know. Matt Ryder, Marco Cotezzi. These guys are fucking awesome. I only endorse amazing people. I would never bring people in that suck. And these two are guys, these two guys are fucking amazing. And we're going to go into what they're about to do on Saturday in just one moment. But I want to give them a chance to introduce themselves. Let's start with you, Matt. Hey guys, so my name is Matt and um, I run the business called Sales Sniper. I also have a podcast called Coffee is for Closes and a YouTube channel uh, that goes under Matthew Ryder. But um, basically, I used to be a sniper and now I do sales, hence the name Sales Sniper. Not super creative, but it is effective which kind of sums me up pretty well. But um, we run a sales agency where we do done for you sales for a whole bunch of different people. We also do sales training uh, for different people, mainly centered around a lot of coaching consultants and stuff like that. And then Marco Cortesi um, is my top sales guy and good friend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my name is Marco. Matt is my mentor. Uh, I started selling since I was 15 years old, door to door, the old way. And uh, after I moved to <laughs> Cold calling, I'm moving to gym membership, and I'm moving to selling high ticket, which I made a million dollars straight in commission with this guy on the other side. Yeah, so before we get into like all this sales stuff, because this is why we live, right? We all want to make a lot more money. We all want to have a lot more impact, and you guys may have a lot of skills. You may be great at Facebook ads, great at clothing, whatever it is you're good at, that's all absolutely fucking useless if you can't sell that shit, right? So we're going to get into some hardcore sales stuff in just a little bit, but really quick, heart, hashtag live, hashtag replay if you're here. And these two guys, I want to give them a plug. I'm going to do this plug a couple times during this because they have the most amazing event coming up this Saturday. Like they, like Marco, Matt, and if you know Eli Wild, one of the greatest salespeople in the world, like I have four people that I think of when it comes to sales and two of them are here. It's Matt, it's Marco, it's Eli and Jeremy. Those are the four people that you need to follow when it comes to sales. And these guys have an amazing event coming up this Saturday. And I hate to drive traffic away from my own group, but this is a not miss event. So if you guys wanna learn sales, it's 27 bucks. And we're gonna put the link below but to make things even better, if you do, if all you guys just do a hashtag Marco right now, hashtag Matt, hashtag Marco, hashtag Matt, not in the same sentence. It's two different sentences, two se separate comments. Every one of you guys will get it for free because I'm going to pay for it. So hashtag Matt, That's hashtag Marco. And this That's is all deal. for charity. Can you guys talk about the charity for one second before we get into the fire? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, the, and the, fire, yeah, the fire, yeah, the yeah. So, the fire, yeah. The fire, there's, no, a, there's no enormous, uh, there's enormous what we call bushfires in Australia at the moment, especially over in Western Australia. And a couple of my friends have actually lost their homes. And so what we're doing is we're going to donate uh, all the money, all the proceeds uh, from the from the sales that we do to get people in um, to uh, one of the rural fire services. My sister's actually a volunteer firefighter in the rural fire service uh are uh, it's like it, it just excuse the vernacular because how we say things is different than how they would say things in america but essentially it's a volunteer like regional fire service that goes out there and that's where a lot of the firefighting is actually done in australia by regional volunteers um so they're always struggling for you know just for equipment and stuff like that and so i'm going to donate it to my sister's uh, rural fire service house so i mean we already have we're, we are, we're going to cap it we have to cap it like 300 I think, um, but I was going to cap it at 200, but we had 200 people sign up in the first like 48 hours and now it's at 231. Um, so it's super exciting. We're going to be going over like basically ways to set yourself apart. And so like 
you know, we're, we're in sales training. We're like, we're in the trenches every single day. And so I do sales training. We also do sales. And, you know, there's a lot of scripts out there that a lot of people use the Sam Oven script or the, or the traffic and funnel scripts. And those scripts are not bad. I'm not shitting on those scripts in any way, shape or form. However, you know, if people are shopping around, a lot of people are these days because there's no lack of coaches and consultants in any single in, uh, like industry to teach anything. And what happens, they end up shopping around, they have the same conversation three or four different times and they go, hey, I've had this conversation. Can we just cut to the chase? So what do you do then? The, really what you need to do then is go through stories, analogies and reframes that are going to build in a built-in connection between you and the client to make you into a trusted advisor. But the problem is, and the reason why it works is because you can't use my stories. There's no congruence, there's no conviction in that. And so we need to teach you a methodology and a system and a process that you with a high level of certainty can go to a prospect and you can actually get them to buy into who you are and what you do as a person. And that's gonna allow you to establish that trusted advisor frame which allows them to actually move people through the sales process. And at the end of that call, you know, vulnerability is like a handshake. Oh, yeah. One person has to shake the other hand, right? And so when you guys have that handshake and you're willing to become vulnerable and you tell a true story that has a lasting impact on somebody where they can become introspective and they can actually start to make a lasting change and you are going to be the person that stands apart. You're going to be different than the rest of the crowd and that's how you can ensure that you're going to stand out from the other salespeople, the other coaches, the other consultants and become the trusted advisor. And that is what we are going to teach on the weekend. Beautiful. I love it. So I'll, I'll like hashtag Matt, hashtag Marco. I'm going to buy your ticket. It's completely free to you. All you guys got to do is fucking show up. And if they run out of tickets, I'll get you the replay. And by the way, I'm going to, what, what, whoever buys from here, if we go above, I'm just going to double the investment on my end. Good man. Good yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. The, the man is congruent. If you guys yeah. have ever heard that term, it's something that we throw around a lot where it's like, if you want to expect people to consistently take action on their goals through purchasing your products or services, then you need to take action on your goals so that you can get them over the line and you can come at that with a place of congruence conviction. So, so with, with that being said, guys, like, can we get some love, some hashtags, some hearts, some Matt, Marco? I want to break like this group to become like the most like commented live I've ever done. I don't know how many of you guys are on here, but let's just make it happen, guys. Um, but really quickly, like I want to get a background of both you guys, because when it comes to sales, like a lot of people will say like, oh, you're a natural born salesperson. You're amazing at what you do. But sometimes that's actually not the truth. Sometimes it actually takes a little bit of hard work, right? Yes, so, it does. You know, there is a line, there is a really a defined line between who you are and what are the skills that you represent. Yeah, there is, there is actually a small truth when someone says you're not really good at sell because you're incongruency with your human behavior because you are an action taker in the first place. But after it's like, it comes down to the level, if you want to be really, really good at sales, there's always the aspect of like, how can I get the right skills to be able to be at the level that I can speak to a person, the level of communication, because that's what makes the sell. It's not about the product that you're selling. It's not about... Most of the times, it's through the, the fantastic things that you have in your program is really understanding the gap, the pain, the consequences, and the impact that has on the person, the problem it has on the person, so that you can help them to overcome that. She steps into another things we're going to cover in the mastermind, which is me and Matt, we came up with, primarily Matt, is it's like watching the movie The Matrix when the guy is like, there is no spoon, there is no objection. Uh, you validate your objection in the moment that you start believing yourself in your own limiting belief and that will make sense for you right exactly so, if you just if you just don't like there's no such thing as an objection it's just a problem right and so like you know people teach objection handling and i think that learning that skill set is an important skill set to learn however like step one is go to scaffolding and so like, you know, if we're talking about natural salespeople, I am anything but a natural salesperson. I'm good at it now, okay? But, it, you know, it's because I had to be because I enjoyed sleeping under a roof and eating food. That was the only reason why I had to become good at sales. I'd started out my first business when I was in the military, right? I'm very driven. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a driven person and I'm driven by visualization and stuff like that, but... You know, I have a few things, a few foibles, but 
you know, when I got out of the military, you know, I was in special operations. Um, I was a sniper, a lot of combat deployments. When I got out, I really didn't have any tangible life skills besides learning how to shoot people from a large distance, of which in the civilian world, there is not a lot of need for right? Um, and Not so, a lot at all. Yeah. Exactly. So when I, when I got out, I, I wanted to take a year off to kind of decompress and learn how to interact with normal human beings again. And I pretty much spent all the money that, I, that I'd saved up in the military. And then I became a personal trainer. And so I became a personal trainer and I was very hardworking. And I, I went down the path of, if you learn more, you will earn more. And so I dove in very hard into the development of my skill set as a personal trainer. And I very quickly realized that although I was a highly developed personal trainer, I was not a super financially successful one. And there were people who I would consider very bad trainers who were extraordinarily successful in their fit in their personal training businesses, you know, making 200 grand a year, making 200 grand a year, you know, watching people work out is pretty good. Right. Um, and so I went through and I was like, man, there's something missing here. So I started to look more into the business side of things. And then I started to go, okay, I need to figure out how to sell people into doing this. So I started working on that part. The first thing I worked on was prospecting. And I just prioritized prospecting to give myself opportunity. I didn't have a high close rate, maybe 10%, but I knew I speak to 10 people, I get one sale. I speak to 10 people. So every single Monday, I would speak to 20 people. And I knew that every Monday, I would make two sales. So I'd make two sales every single week and the rest of it was coaching clients. So then what I did is I was like, okay, now I'm going to open a gym because I'm a good trainer. That's the next step. I'll open a gym. I'm always looking for the next thing. Right. And I opened a gym and I did not know what the fuck I was doing. I had absolutely no clue. And so I was sitting there and I had a business partner at the time and we, we opened a gym in Bondi, which is like opening a gym in Beverly Hills. Right. It's the most expensive rent you can possibly buy. It was like 13,000 or $12,000 a month rent. Um, and we had a three month rent free period and you know, and anyway, after about six to eight weeks of having the gym open, we had like 10 clients at 50 bucks a week. So we were about four to six weeks away from having our first rent bill. I was current. I was at that stage. I was $90,000 in debt. And I, and I saw a, a course that was like, learn how to get more leads into your fitness business. So I went there and I I sat there and did the core. I did the, I did the presentation. The guy looked at me and he said, they said, yep. And to learn how to do this, it'll cost you six and a half thousand dollars. And it's an eight week course. I just went, fuck. I don't have six and a half thousand dollars. So I went outside and I called my dad and I said, um, I said, dad, this is what's going on. Now, my dad's a confidant of mine. He's a mentor of mine. And, he, and I said, he goes, well, do you have the money? I was like, no, I don't have the money. I was like, I could probably find the money. Everyone can find money, right? Like it was, you know, my phone costs two grand, right? I could sell it if I need to. Um, and then so I was like, and he goes, okay, well, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And I was like, okay, that's, that's bringing the A game. He's bringing, he's bringing the big boy pants today. So I was like, well, I would do it. And he's like, why would you do it? I was like, well, if I couldn't fail, then what's, of course I would do it. Like everyone would do it. And he goes, well, I didn't raise you to act as if you were going to fail. Like, all right. So I went down there, went to the front of the room and I said, okay, I can give you three grand today. The rest of it's going to have to be in a payment plan. If you're cool with that, we can move forward. And so I did it. Now I didn't tell my wife, I didn't tell my business partner. So I had to go home that night and I told my wife and she was like, I support you hundred percent. If you think it's the best thing for us and our family, I will support you hundred percent. I was like, okay. And my business partner didn't exactly feel the same. And this is when I learned the power that persuasion can have to the rest of your outcome of your life, because that was a shared card. He could have just canceled that transaction at any stage and I wouldn't have been able to do it. So I knew I had to get my, get my selling boots on and start to convince him because he was a highly risk averse person, highly risk averse, which is probably the reason why the business has never really been that successful since it, like, since I left. Um, and I said, listen, man, like everything that we've done until now has led us to be ultimately in a position of which we were unhappy and unsuccessful. And we can continually do the same thing for the next six weeks and we can not pay the rent. And I was like, how much longer are we going to spend doing things that we know are going to get the same outcome? And maybe we have to make an uncharacteristic decision to get an uncharacteristic result. So if you'll back me enough, 
and I will do what I need to do to get that. And in three days, I consumed the entire eight week course. And, and they asked me to be their business partner. And me and those two people opened up 18 gyms together. And that's how I met Marco. I love that fucking story. <clears throat> no risk, so, no fucking reward. Yeah. And that taught me a lot, that story, right? And, and, and you know, yeah. it, 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 it taught me a lot about myself. It taught me a lot about, like, you know, people who take action and people who don't and people who wait and people who don't. And I think, like, you know, there's just not that much time. And like, how much more time are we willing to risk staying where we are? And essentially, that's what sales is. It's about having people understand the real life, genuine day to day consequences of their action or inaction. And I think if you're good at your job, and I hope you think you are, then you owe it to yourself and others to figure out a way to get people out of their own fucking way oh, and into yeah. these programs so they can actually change and actually start living the life that they want to live. And sales is a serious business, and I take it very seriously because. When I used to own that gym and I was not good at selling until years later, I would own that gym and I would have people come in and they were 30, 40 pounds overweight and they were unhappy with their life, unhappy with their fitness, unhappy with their bodies. And they were punishing themselves for that. And it wasn't their fault, but it was their problem. They might've been given shitty habits from their parents. It's fine. These things happen. I was given bad habits around food and my parents, but like, you know, if I didn't sell them, I would see them two, three, four, six months later. Now they were 60 pounds overweight. Now they were 70 pounds overweight and they were more unhappy. And I was like, fuck, that's my fault. Like had I have had, there is someone out there that could have sold that person. And like, yes, you get the money, which is great. But at the end of the day, like how much of a disservice are you doing to people by not fucking taking this part of the game seriously? Because the hardest part of any coaching relationship is the first bit because we have to understand where they're coming at and why they're doing it. Otherwise, what level of coach are we if we don't truly understand the motivations behind why our clients want to do stuff? And that motivation is uncovered during the sales process. And that fire that we create is what gets them moving. So let me ask you this, Matt. So before, like pre-amazing salesperson, like when did you recognize that like you're, you're selling, you came out of the military, right? Out of uh, Australia. Correct. Yep. And then you, you started going into gym sales. Then you started your own gym. When did you realize you wanted to become like this sales professional to, to transform lives? Right. Like I didn't realize I was in sales until like a year ago. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> you know what I mean? Like to be perfectly honest, I was a sales guy that didn't realize I was a sales guy. Like I, right. like well, I re really quickly. So a year ago, let's just go one year back. Like what were you selling a year ago? Uh, I just started selling like business coaching, okay, like high so, ticket business coaching. And before that, what were you selling? I was selling fitness. And okay. like, I think, I think to answer your question is probably a few years ago when I realized why I needed to sell people. So like, I'll give you a little story. I like stories. Um, I was not, uh, I was a fat kid, right? Being a fat kid, I think plays in your mind, like your entire life. I don't think you ever like, you never lose that. Like you're just a fat kid and not a fat adult's body. Do you know what I mean? Um, and so like, I have a distinct memory of being 12 years old, looking down in the shower, grabbing my belly and trying to like rip it off and not understanding why I had it. Right. And it's like, it's a scarring, somewhat scarring memory, I would say that I have. And um, I remember like when I had a realization, when I met my wife who came from a family that is very fitness orientated. And then when we decided to have a family, my wife was like, you know, because I would binge eat, I would like work out and binge and all that kind of stuff. She's like, you got to stop doing that shit, man, because you're going to give it to the kids. And I was like, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean I got to stop doing that? She's like, you binge eat. Like you, you're all in or you're all out. Like the, there's no in between with you. She's like, you can't do that shit, man. Like otherwise, like you have to be consistent so the kids see consistency so that they don't get the same shitty habits you have. And I had this like glass shattering moment. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, that was given to me. I didn't ask for that shit. And I was like, I, it, it gave me a whole realization where I could realize that like something was my problem, but not my fault. And as soon as it was my problem, I could fix it. Right. And then like, I went on a mission to like everyone that I sold, I saw as a potential parent or a parent of a kid that I could stop having that moment in the shower when they're 12 years old, trying to rip off their belly. And so like, it gave me such a higher level of conviction um, and when I'm passionate about something, I'm very good at talking about it with conviction. 
And so like every time I sold somebody, I sold them within the back of my head. If I do not sell this person, they will give shitty habits to a kid and then they will have to deal with that for the rest of their life. And I don't want to do that. And it's my responsibility to stop it. And so like the moment I realized that, like everything became different. Because when you realize your why, you either walk in or towards your purpose and your what is so much more impactful that you can help others see the truth and you can, I guess, you're willing to do things that you weren't previously willing to do. And I love that story because I feel the same exact way. If I don't sell somebody, they're going to go with an inferior solution and they're going to get fucked over and then never, ever going to see their full potential. Never. Yeah. So like Marco, let me, let me uh, go to you really quick. So you met Matt through the f fitness industry and, and like you, you have a thick accent and you're, you're selling yeah. to the United States. I mean, I like, two C's. But, but, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, the, the, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Mar Marco is just a straight fucking killer. So it's the sales sniper and the sales assassin here. So by the way, yeah. really quick, let's get some more comments going because I want this to be the most popular live in our group. So hashtag assassin, hashtag uh, sniper, really quick. All right, guys. But Marco, let me hear your background really quick. Well, me, I met uh, Matt through the company we used to work in through fitness. And I was doing fairly well there. And after um, he decided to open sales knife and uh, he, he contacted me, he's like, hey, man, you want to jump on? It took a little bit for me to get out of my comfort zone and kind of uh, going for it. But the main part is like, as you can see, the conviction, the conviction that he has is what brought me to be now because he's my mentor. So when I jump yeah, yeah, no, people on sales calls, it reminds me a lot of that decision that I had to make, which uh, I thought that time they're making 10K or 8K a month in commission would be like, man, it was, it's crazy. But right now that I'm in a good, really, really good position in life, I have to give it to the fact that I had to take the leap of faith because someone sold me or if you want to see it, someone helped me to solve a problem, which is like, don't be stubborn, take a leap of faith believe in the other things that can happen so that's how i came to matt but i went i sold since i was 15 years old uh and i, I remember these things that because you asked for matt these things is like when you realize that you are a sales guy i i remember the first the first two months for selling I, I drop off school i was going really bad at school uh, the first job they give is the sales job because like you know like <laughs> that's the aspect is like you're going to make money no one wants to do it because everyone uh feel rejected and everything so you do it so what happened is i going to step into a place where everyone was really stubborn it was dropping solution no one was asking question i was like what well, what if we understand what is what if we understand those people like what if we see if they got something that we can serve them. And that totally changed me because I was like, seeing people 40, 50 years old doing like two to three grand a month. And in my first three months, I made double what they used to make by just asking people, do you need it? Do you feel like there is something you're gonna use? And after, I remember one of, one of the clients that, uh, at that time I used to sell, I used to sell electricity, <laughs> electricity for home and office, okay? And it was cheaper than what they had. So it was a kind of an easy problem to, to find and easy to solve. And the guys told me, man, I got to really, really tell you thanks. Because like all the money that we're saving, they're going towards charity. And that hit me now, like, man, I think I can do this. I think this is a, whatever everyone is trying to tell me that it's a bad job. That is just a job of someone that doesn't have a hope or someone that doesn't, is the job that everyone ends up like. This one is actually a great job. And that changed me completely. It was like, man, I want to master it. Because I can tell bigger things to bigger people and solve bigger problems. And that kind of came along with me until like today, even today when I, when I saw, I saw three guys today, even today. Yeah, so th these guys sell more in a month than most businesses do in an entire year. Like Matt, probably, I don't know what volume you do, but I know it's more than a million dollars individually. Um, but when's a moment, because sales is an emotional thing. Like even though we're trying to be detached from the sale, we're trying to avoid our own commission. 
like when was a moment that you just almost gave up on this shit you're like all right i'm just meant to be in like a nine to five guy i never had it i i i when i realized that this is was was like this was like communication and loving people and um because i believe me or not okay i know there is a lot of people on the live but I ask you to believe me in this. I jump on a call and not even once I want to sell someone. Not even once. I want to love them because that is the communication that helps you to understand what kind of problem they have because they open up with you. So that kind of drives me to do what I do. If that makes sense. No, 100%. Because like I think the old school shit is sell or be sold, right? It's yeah. somebody who has to win. There's two sides of the fucking table. It's almost like two lawyers going at it, but that's not the case. And I think a lot of people think that that is the case that when you're getting on a sales call, like, Oh, let me just hear about it. I just want to hear what they have to say. But the person on the other line, if they actually give a shit about you, they're going to change your life. Like allow it. Like exactly. And I, and I think the, the, the element of people is since they come through 25 uh, bad sales calls and they go, they, they have the element of fear, uh, which is 10x of what or 20x, which is not really the casual the way I'm saying it, <laughs> of, 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 like, uh, of like what in the past used to be. So you always start a call with someone that has a shield on it, which is sad to see, but it's understandable on the other side. But as a job, if we're going to call ourselves salespeople, I'm more a messenger is to be able to kind of make them understand, yo, man, we're not all the same. If I right. feel by any chance that you can't make it by the end of this call with what I've got, I'm the one pulling out. It's not just you. Right. That, so, so really quick, before we go into some sales stuff here, like each one of you, like what's your most like memorable sale you've ever made? Um. To be honest, I'm pretty sure it was, I don't even think it was expensive. I think I sold a, a six week fitness program to a yeah. lady who was an alcoholic in, in housing commission. So the housing, housing commission is like free government housing, right? It's one yeah. of the most memorable um, sales I've ever had because like she was an alcoholic, she was overweight, she was extraordinarily unhappy. And this program was like 400 bucks for a six week group coaching program. So it was pretty expensive in terms of like, what you get and she like she had to figure everything out um and i went very hard because like i don't know it's it's definitely it's probably my most memorable like i mean it's nowhere near my big my biggest sale is well over a hundred thousand i think in terms of one one off sale um but yeah like that was just i felt like i made a difference in that lady's life because i got her and she had to quit drinking in order to pay for it right um so like i felt like i you know, and then she did the program and she was quite successful. There's that. And there was another one, another fitness sale where I had a young lady and her husband come in and her name was Natalie. Her husband's name was Matt. And they ended up being clients of mine for about five years. And she came to me and she said, um, she's quite overweight, very pretty, you know, the pretty, real pretty girls that are quite overweight. And I actually told her, I actually called her anyway. Um, but she said, I want to lose about 10 kilos. That's like about 16, 17 pounds. She probably had 60, 70 pounds to lose. I just said to her, I said, I can't, I can't do that. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, like, you know, I'm sure people are super nice to you and you have a very, very pretty face, but you have at least 60 pounds to lose. And I was like, and I'm going to go ahead and say some things here and just trust me. It comes from a good place. You're here, you're in your late twenties and you're here with your husband. So I'm, and he's quite fit. So I'm tipping that you struggle and he doesn't. So he's willing to come on board with you, which means that you're looking to have a baby. And she started crying and I said, like, it's okay. Like, and I said, like, so I'm not going to sign you up under the proviso that you're going to lose 10 pounds, 20 pounds. I said, you are going to commit to one year of training four times a week, and you're going to commit to losing 70 pounds. Because if you don't, then everyone's going to keep telling you, it's okay, babe, you look great, you're so pretty. 
you're not going to put yourself in a position where you're healthy enough to actually have a baby. So what do you want to do? And she signed up for a year. She, they, they did signed a contract for a year and they lost, she lost about 50 pounds and had two kids during the time that I was training her. And I think that was very memorable. And she's thanked me a lot because I was the only person who told her the truth. So, yeah, yeah I think it's that, that's so important is because like salespeople, like friends, family, they'll tell you what you want to hear. People who want to see you transform will tell you. Right? So really quick, so let, let's transition. Mar Marco, like actually, let me hear your most memorable sale. Because like, by the way, guys, like this is important because I know a lot of you guys in this group, you guys want to get better at sales. So the reason I'm asking these questions is to get in the mindset of some of the two best salespeople you'll ever hear speak, especially for free right now? For me, and I'm really that question, I think is a really, really good question. That's why I like to do it because they make me think and that's a, a good kind of things. Like I sold content, which is, I can't disclose right now, but I'm on the 100K, okay? But that actually not memorable because the different logistic of speaking with a guy one-to-one, -one. but I had one guy and, and um, for a program, you know, is, is from Andrew. And I remember at the end of the call, he told me these things. I mean, those are my, those are my last four grand. This week, I won't, I will go without food because I believe you. So it's up to, he told me, it's up to you. Can I do it? Do you feel like that I can do it or not? So in that moment, I had to take the decision for him, which trust me, it was the hardest things that I had to do, but I, the, that comes with the conviction that you have in what you sell for help people, and now it makes 30K a month. So that for me, it was the, I think is the moment that I was like, and I'm thinking about it really hard and it makes me still feel emotional about it but when I had to take a decision for another person. That could be no, but, <clears throat> That's huge. I mean, like, like I, my, my most memorable sales just honestly, like I used to work my fucking balls off at realtor.com, a real estate advertising company. I used to actually, it was called home store. So when I applied for the job, I thought it was a furniture store on the internet. And when I showed up, it was a boiler room of a hundred people. I interviewed for the job, got it. I was the worst salespeople, salesperson on the floor. Then I quit. And then three years later, I got hired by them. And I didn't think of it as money. I thought about it as passion. Like I, I used to play soccer and I never made it pro. So this was my pro sport. So I, I, I treated it exactly like the, uh, the tenacity, the, the, the skill set, like my words were my weapons. And, uh, and oh, I mean, wow. next, yeah. I need to ask you a question because yeah. a lot of people I'm seeing the comment and a lot of people talking about you know listen listening us talking like this one of the sales call or oh, one one made you switch from that one made you from going from like being okay to seeing it and loving it or like being passionate about it I think the passion was is because I failed at what I really wanted to do I wanted to be a pro athlete like I, I, I was ready to drop out of high school. I was ready to never go to college. I wanted to be an athlete. And then I had to be a professional and work. And then I start like, once I started my company, a switch flipped where I don't fail. I, can't, I, I, I was more fearful of failure than I was of succeeding. So I just couldn't fail. I couldn't, I couldn't face my family or my friends because they, they all never wanted me to actually start the company. So that, that's kind of how I started. And that's how I, uh, my very first big deal was a publicly traded company and it was my old, my old company was realtor.com and ended up becoming like a $6 million contract. So, so that didn't, that worked out pretty, pretty, pretty good on my part, but I've never done it for the money. I've always done it for the fun, the passion, the change and everything. So money's never been my driver. As you can tell, I don't get a haircut. You know, you know, to be honest, customer. I don't, I don't think money's anyone's driver. Like I'm like, and don't get me wrong, I'm a, I'm a fairly materialistic person. I drive a $200,000 car, I wear a Rolex, and this is a Louis Vuitton cardigan. I am a douchebag. I, I, I make no excuses for it. I like nice things. My wife calls me a luxury lover. I just like nice things, right? Um, but, like, it, it's, it doesn't matter. But, like, money 
literally provides nothing once you hit a certain level of income. Once you're making enough to pay all your bills and feed your food, it's just fluff, right? What really drives people like what there's, there's, there's two things, there's two drivers in life, right? One is a push and one is a pull, right? And so the pull is running, is running towards, right? Is being pulled towards a goal. And I think goals and visions is very, very important. I'm a very goal and very, a very visual person. So I have a vision board and I have all those kind of things, but like what you're running away from is equally, if not more important. And the, the, the problem is, and the people why I think people don't act with the level of certainty, velocity, veracity, like get the fucking job done type attitude is because they've never actually explored the consequences of their failure. And so like, if you, if you are in a, a nature reserve and you see a deer in a nature reserve, you can go up and give a little pat and a little tap on the bum, right? You could slit that thing's throat. It wouldn't even know what was going on. You ever gone to a hunting ground and tried to get within a hundred meters of a deer? You can't fucking do it because that deer has seen it. It understands the consequences. So the moment it hears a twig snap, it's fucking gone because it understands the consequences of its inaction. And so like the only thing that gets most people up is like running and running is, is understanding that like nobody ever got to the front door of a burning building and stopped. That's far enough. Right. And so like, and I think you reach a point where you stop running away and you start running towards, but I don't think that ever that demon that you're ever running from ever leaves. Like if you think that Jeff Bezos is running towards more money, like he's not, but I would love to have a conversation to, to find out what the fuck that guy's running from. Because I don't know if he was bullied as a three-year-old or whatever, but like, yeah, man. Like, and I think when people realize and they start to contemplate, and I think the reason why I find it so easy to contemplate is because I've been to more funerals than I have weddings. I spent my entire twenties burying my best friends. And so like, I understand that, that we don't have time. And so like, I'm not willing to like, just go about my life and like half ass things and be like, Oh, I'll put it off to the next week, next month, next year, next decade. Oh, look, I'm dead. Like, so like, I want to go to bed every single night with the knowledge that I will do everything that I can to ensure that I can provide what I want and what I need for my family and my life. And I will go to bed every single night knowing that because like, I'm not willing to accept anything else. And that's why like people are surprised with how fast I can do things and how quickly I can grow companies and all this kind of stuff. It's because like the, the like if you're inside my brain and saw the, the consequences that I envision of not doing things, they're, they're catastrophic and unpleasant to contemplate. So I just, I don't let it be an option. Yeah, no, I, I love that, Matt, man. That, that, that resonates so well that there's so much consequences of inaction. Like, why do you think people just like stutter and stay like exactly where they are? Like, what are they fearful of? Why are they fearful of success? Um, don't know. Maybe yeah. they were bullied as a three-year-old. Maybe they weren't loved enough yeah. as a parent. I don't fucking know. It's their. It's not their fault, but it's their fucking problem. That's for sure. I, I can. I can tell you my take on it, and it's something that I'm really kind of uh, studying in terms of like I, when I have self calls, I really realize what how those things evolve in terms of psychological terms, because it doesn't. What, what Matt say is like you know someone chased. Uh, it's, it's chased by something or someone is trying to catch something. Most of the times, the fear is, is not about in chase, in um, go and chase something. Like, I, I would like to make 20K, I would like to make 100K, I would like to make 250K. But as they're still stuck on what, what they've been chasing, what they kind of running away from. But they, they've been grabbed though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So there's a difference between someone running and someone sitting. That one sitting and gave up on it. So he doesn't have a belief right that actually can help. And that's why some people 
kind of don't get what they want because they're always in front of the door, but they're never gonna go and get inside because they've been told that by having a pattern or mindset that is from their family or from whatever they comes from before and they never break their chain. And I'm, I'm the, like, I am that person. Whatever the people are in the audience right now, I used to be that guy. I used to be the not taking action guy. After, when I saw people, yeah, after seeing what's the perfect in action, I told, <laughs> I told to myself, I'm never going to be like that. Right. So I drive into, I, I want oh, feel hey, like I want an efficiency because that what keeps me going to get better. Because I'm, I would, I finally realized what I was running away from, which is like being mediocre. So, so what's the difference? Like, so there's so many people. Like, like for instance, you used to sell oh, yeah, gym memberships, right? Yeah. What what price point were you selling it at? The, uh, so, sorry, the audio was my fault. Go ahead. Yeah, the the gym memberships you were selling yeah. before. Like, what price were you selling it at? I started at twenty three dollars a week, forty seven, seventy seven, nineteen, ninety seven, because I was I was selling so much that the, that the guys like man, the gym is getting full, so we need to we need to up the price. So we went from forty seven to fifty seven to seventy seven to ninety seven, and after we start selling our ticket packages, like something like okay, we since we got so many people in the gym, we have to start selling like mobile personal training. So it's thousand five hundred dollars package per month, uh, and after it became three thousand to five thousand for ninety days, and that's how I started. But so, so how did you go from selling like low ticket like gym memberships? Like, how did you change your mindset? Because like a lot of people, it, not, it forces are, me. Right. But, 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 but what's the difference? Like, what's your, like, because like a lot of this audience, what they're selling is like, they're selling themselves. They're selling themselves short. They're selling for underpriced. They're doing these free fucking trials. Yeah. And they may have had previous sales jobs, but when they work for themselves, there's this like, this scaredy cat that comes out that if they, if they want to say a high price, they can't. And all of a sudden they say $500 or, you yeah. know, what they'll do it for free. Like oh, what's that mindset shift to go from fucking $97 gym memberships to like $30,000 packages that people say yes to. This guy on the right, he forces me to do it because he forces me to be uncomfortable. So I remember one day we had a conversation, I told him, no, I'm not going to do it this week. He said, no, no, you're going to do it this week. <laughs> but Though it's like when you develop, you understand that it's not about you, it's not about the price, and it's not about the product that you sell. It's about the other guy that you got in front of you. And when you start focusing on the guy and the problem, then the price is like makes no sense because me and Matt, we, we do B2B, which are like 150 plus, okay? But after we go and sell 6,000 or 31,000, the method is the same because we don't care about what we sell. Yeah, we do on a level where they has to match up their needs, of course. That's called being ethical. But I focus on you. And be focusing on you. I don't care about the price. If you don't have the money for it, that's not the problem. The problem is like why you haven't made enough money for have the money for buy there. That's what I really care of. I used to sell personal trainer and most of them, they, they had no money. And I used to tell them, listen, man, you not having the money is a cause of a problem. It's a consequences of something that you're not doing right, which is like knowing how to generate money. And if you don't fix that, that is going to be your recurring problem. So it's you said, on oh, it. but that's a conversation between me and him. It's not, what if they say that or they say that I say so? That's why I get really upset when people uh, and I jump on role plays or they send me a DM is like, oh, how do I call the time objection? But the time objection is different for a lot of people. Yeah, well, thanks. Understand what the time is for that person. Because most people don't even have a conception of time. It's like, ah, I'm, I'm burning out. I'm, uh, like, you know, my, my business is, uh, it, it makes me overwhelmed. Of course, she doesn't have the time is making him understand that there is an option of being different. But that option is, is inspired in his mindset. 
can this be, can this person been taught by his family or whatever his past that he has to be, has to be an hard worker for actually get it done in life go and tell him that the systems and, and process will work he will never going to see it until he commit to change so that's when the program doesn't matter i don't matter where they where, where they come from matter and that's how you make sales that's how you make 1.5 million or contract worth and three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash collected a month in sales it's, so it's a big mindset shift so like for, for my audience here listening to this like what's a mindset shift that they need to take because a lot of people like what, what i already know is like the same objections you just said like i don't have time i don't have the money um let me think about it let me talk to my fucking partner that they don't actually fucking have but the the reality is isn't that it's like nobody's trying to sell you shit it's just your your consequence of it in action but like what, what, what's like, because a lot of people, like I'm a big fan, like of, of one thing, traffic and fucking sales. I think they go together. So it's one thing. You got traffic, you got sales. It's and a good company name, by the way. Is that your company name? No, it is. It's just a good oh, company okay. traffic and sales. <laughs> All right. Uh, but but that, those are the two things I've always preached because like I've sold probably like, I don't know, like nine, $10 million of graphic design. I still never logged into Photoshop once. Because I look at two things. Number one, if I have traffic, I can solve a fucking problem. I can outsource the rest. It's so fucking easy. Yeah. Like how, how, how easy is it to outsource the rest? Exactly. Exactly. There is like the element of like just being able to be there and assess. That's what a trusted advisor is. Is is in this? Is not in what you say. Like I'm the CEO. Most of, most of the time, sir, and I I, I like to get cold called on. <laughs> it's something that I go, and they all call me. It's like I'm the CEO. I'm the CEO. I so, man, the CEO of like that doesn't call me. Just ask me. Like there is no sense. The CEO of that company, it doesn't call me. <laughs> <laughs> What, what was that Sorry. moment in your book, uh, Matt? I'm gonna start with you. What was that moment where you went from like, like a li- a, a deer that was stuck in headlights? Where like, all right, I don't know if this, I'm cut out for this shit. Where you're like, I'm I'm the fucking man at this. Like, where was that uh, in sales? Well, I um, yeah, like I don't know. Like, I think um, I I know I've got a lot of holes in my game that I I sort of want to that I want to get better at. To be honest, so I don't know like. I don't think anyone can really master sales because if you master sales, like you've mastered persuading human beings in such a powerful way that you can literally get whatever you want at all times. Right. So like, I mean, you can ask my wife, I haven't figured that piece out. You know what I mean? So like, I think, I think I'm relatively good at getting people to see their own faults or to see the error in their thinking, which is then gets them to persuade themselves. And I think in sales, one of the things that, got me to be in a position where I was able to consistently be successful. I think that's about as much as you can, as much as you can hope for is the fact that what I say is relatively unimportant. Um, Like what Ralph Waldo Emerson said, right? Um, Who you are speaks so loudly. I can't even hear what you say. Right. So if I'm the person that I need to be, um, and I'm doing everything I can do to get my shit together, to go after my goals, to be a good dad, to be a good husband, to be a good boss, to be a good mentor, to be a good friend. Like if I'm doing all that, then I'm putting myself in the best position possible to be able to get other people to be able to want to hop on the bandwagon and do the same. And so that's like my main focus is to be able to do all that stuff. And then I have a process that I take people through and I always do the process doesn't matter whether it's a friend or a referral or like a guy that I've known for 20 years or a brand new sales prospect. Everyone goes through the process because that's the only way that I can ensure that I can somewhat predict the outcome. And a lot of people, they don't have a system behind what they do and they just free for all their sales and it's madness. Because it's like probably the most important element in your business um, is getting people in the door. Once you figure that piece out, you can figure everything else out. But that's the one piece that not a lot of people figure out, right? Um, And so once you can do that, then you can pretty much, you can write your own ticket. 
you know? And so taking it really seriously, having a system, having a process, not winging it and, and taking it, you know, to the next level and really going, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to put some effort into this now. And if you line, if you're lining everything up on what you're saying and what you're doing and you're taking action on your goals and you're congruent, um, then yeah. And you find a good process and we're going to be going over a lot of those processes in the masterclass. That's what it's about. Like we're going to tell you how you stand out, how, how you can put together a sale that doesn't sound like anybody else. Um, so you can stand apart. You can become the trusted advisor, you know, but a lot of that is going to not, you know, a lot of that is going to start with you. Like, you know, cause you can't tell my stories, you know, raise your hand if you've been in contact getting shot at for two days straight. Mm. You have, you know what I mean? So I have stories that other people don't have. Right. But I've also never had a baby. Mm. I've never delivered a baby because I'm a guy. Right. And there's a lot of very difficult things that I have not done. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of difficult things that I have done. And so everyone's got stories, everyone's got struggles, but it's, you know, it's about putting that together in a way in a system that allows people to see themselves in you and in other people to then create some introspective moments where they can start to change. Right. So, so guys, really quickly. So Matt just threw out there that they got a master class on Saturday. It goes to a good cause. It's $27. If you want to pay for it yourself, we'll drop the link. If you just want to do hashtag right now, actually, fuck it. Everybody, there's 26 of you guys live right now. Hashtag live, hashtag Marco, hashtag Matt. I'm going to buy your fucking ticket. <laughs> that, it's, it's that simple. I don't know how we're going to coordinate how I buy their tickets, but we'll figure that out later. Maybe I'll buy it and they get the replay. Well, those are just logistics. But what I'd like to see is everybody stop struggling because there's no- yeah, Landon reason. live, Janish live, Janesh Cody live. live. I love it. Steve, take an action. Action. Take Congruency. Action. Keep going, guys. Keep going, Congruency. everybody. Let's keep going. You know, it's stuff that people, throws around. people throw it around and it's kind of like an old sales tactic and technique. And I think, but I think that there's such an element of truth to it to be like, you have to be the guy. You have to be, or the girl, you have to be who you say you're going to be like, you can't be a fat PT. You just can't do it. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? You can't be a guy teaching people how to get healthy when you're unhealthy. You can't be, you know, the person teaching people how to make money if you're broke. You know, you just, you, like, you, you can't do it. So you, you've got you've to gotta live the life and walk the path. And then once you've walked the path, you can go back along the path and you can help people not stumble along the way. That's what a good coach is. They're a navigator. Like, hey, there's a hard, sharp turn coming up. We probably want to prepare for it. All right, cool. Let's do that. And it makes the road easier. And we have, we're tremendously fortunate to live in a time. Obviously, you're always fortunate to live in the time that you're in because it's always better than the time before. But we're tremendously fortunate to live in a time where we have unlimited access to information to incredible people. You can go online right now, go into YouTube, and you should watch Russell Brunson's pitch at the 10X concert. And you can see a fucking 90-minute masterclass on how to pitch from stage. You can go onto Eli Wild's Facebook group and you can watch him drop knowledge bombs every fucking day about pitching from stage and closing and reframes. You can go into my Facebook group. We have a free role play every single day in my Facebook group. We live in an age of technology where like you have unlimited bounds of knowledge and you can pretty much figure everything out. Now, is anyone going to give you the secret sauce for free? No, you got to pay for it, but fuck you. You should pay for it. These people are working hard. Give them some money, right? So, um, and that's why whenever I have a problem, I identify the way to solve it. And I go, okay, what's the best way to solve that problem? If it's giving somebody money, I'll just give them the money. Like, and even when I didn't have the money, I still found a way to do it. Um, because that's what's going to get me there faster. And as we know, the consequences of my inaction in my own brain are relatively catastrophic. So I'd rather pay money than suffer that, that fate. And, and there's something magical that happens when you finally actually put your money where your mouth is, because then you like miraculously actually take fucking action because yeah. otherwise you would just be a YouTube expert or a library expert. That's really it. But that's how you get better at sales, right? That's, that's your point of it is when you tell people things that you've done. So you're just bringing your own trade. That's why before I was talking about people, they want to say what we say when, uh, we, there is a think about it objection or on uh, the wife objection or like the money objection. Man, if you haven't experienced those things, 
there is not really much that you can say because you don't have the conviction for it. If you've been through it, if you've been through fear, if you've been through not having the money but doing it and succeeding or failing, either ways, you're doing something. That is what you have to tell pe people. You will come up with the word because you've been there. I wouldn't tell nobody to do things that I'm not willing to do. That's the, my biggest trait. Um, I'm an age 27 people. Uh, I wouldn't tell every single of my guys to do things that, that I haven't done. I paid for my own masterclass ticket and I'm, <laughs> I'm doing a part of it. Why? Because I have to teach 220 people that are coming that I'm congruent to that because I'm doing it for charity. That's the main part. 100%. Like, I, I believe in paying everybody for their time, energy, and money. Sometimes, yeah. not always, but like, I'm, a, I'm Indian still, so I still try to negotiate, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll do my best. But no, I, I like, when I want to solve, like, when, when you get better at what you do, so some people are at level one, two, three, four, five, right? So, like, as you have bigger problems, bigger challenges, you just pay bigger money because, and your problems get smaller. So you're willing to pay fifty, hundred thousand dollars for an inch of a problem, because that one fucking problem can make you a million, two million, ten million dollars. Right. That, right. That's, and, uh, that's how it is. You know, you you may. Uh, I want to just briefly go back on the question that you asked Matt before. Hey guys, I'm sorry. I do have to run. I have a coaching client in about one minute. So, um, but Marco, you you can stay because we booked in an hour. So I'm I'm back to back every day. So just so you know. <laughs> So Matt, I can never go along. I appreciate you guys' time, though. Everyone, I look forward to seeing you guys on the uh, on the masterclass. Um, please feel free to add me on Facebook. And uh, I'll, you know, I'll pass, drop your link to your profiles, your groups, everything after this. Sweet. All right, all right, guys. Thanks for coming, uh, and I uh, appreciate you and your time. Goodbye. All right, bye, Matt. Thanks, man. You know, you were talking about it was like when do you know that someone is good at this so like when you realize that you're good at that or you're really really good or you are in the whatever we call it the one percent so zero zero point one percent it's like most of the times getting into the mindset so believing that you're good it doesn't serve you the best and that's i learned this one and i want to give credit to that so one of my other mentors which is eli she told me like the, you know when you start believing too much in you you stop believing in learning and that's where i feel like a lot of entrepreneurs are when they get to the 70, 80K a month or 50K or 30K a month, you stay there. You stay there because you think your own ego is what gets in front of you. And what's next, what's on the other side is actually just yourself. It, it, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot, of, a lot of the guys in the group, like they may be hitting their first five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, right? Like what's literally on the other side, the same effort you guys are doing right fucking now there's 250k on the other side right it's it, it's not that monumental of a shift it's a mindset thing it's can i do a thing but also like you got to get the necessary training right because like i mean with, with marco with matt these guys like they are fucking ninjas at sales like i mean these guys their craft is sales like i mean like Mar like i would not have you the, marco in this group if if he was not good at sales for you guys so like like another like we get some like hearts some some uh, ken wells facts like literally sales is the lifeblood of a business but there's so many other things that i get you entrepreneurs have like you have to figure out what do i sell who do i need to hire sops scalability exactly. There, there's a lot of stuff when you're running the entire show, but mm. your, your, your core skill set should be selling when it comes to selling an employee that you can't afford to pay, selling a vendor that you want to delay payment on, selling a lawyer that wants to sue you. But then when it, what you're used to when it comes to selling is how do I get a person to persuade themselves to buy my product that needs it, right? It's actually right. And I'm, I'm going to start, um, uh, I started um, a YouTube series, which is going to come up next month about going in the street and asking people what they think about sales, but also is to try to sell people into things that they're undersized on. So just because I wanted to kind of understand if I could sell everything, right? And just selling coaching or selling sales coaching or stuff like that. What I found that a lot of people, um, they, they don't like selling, like they hate it. Well, the reason why they had it, though, is just coming back to what we were saying before, is their ego. 
thinking about that is not necessary, but just because they feel rejected by it. When someone gets like you were coming, like the objection is uh, they go into the panic mode, then, you know, and it's like, and it's like, oh, they, they're, they're, they're objecting at me. It's like, no, man, they just believe in stuff. <laughs> you know, that's the main part of it. So. And you got to get creative. Like the way I was able to get Marco and Matt even on here is I didn't say, hey, would you guys want to do a, a fucking interview? Do you know how many times these guys get asked that? Like I sent them a, a special thing that I'm not going to tell you guys out here. <laughs> because that's, that's how I got it. You got to pay for that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but yeah, like I, I like you, you, you have to contrast. You have to make people feel good about themselves. Right. So, yeah. so, so like like what I, I want to be respectful for time because I did ask for an hour and Matt jumped off. If he, worked. if he helps people, I'm happy to stay. Okay. I don't want to take too much more of your time because I know it's a different time zone that you're in. And uh, I want to do, if you're okay, a little role play mm -hmm. and I'm going to be the customer. Yeah, go ahead. And Remember. Like you tell me the objection that is most common and then no, no, I'll no. object to you. Or do you want me to give you the objection? Yeah, go ahead. So let's, I just got to bring my habit because the way how I break down objection is write something down. Just give me okay. one second. Let's do it. So for you, for you guys out there in the audience right now, while Marco is getting his uh, piece of paper and pen, what objections do you want me to ask them? Because we're going to go over the money objection. That's for certain, but that's not the most important. We're going to go over the let me think about it partner that may exist or not exist what i can do as well which i found is really helpful is you give me a objection i can tell people what i'm is actually doing in that time and explain it so let's okay go for do, it. do we need to give this scenario or do i just give you the objection let's let's say you're buying a thirty thousand dollars program okay okay i'm buying a thirty thousand dollar program all right let, so let, let help you scalability um, and a couple of other, other things, okay? So, okay, uh, Raul, I think um, you mentioned that the, the issue that we were trying to fix was um, a lead generation and scalability of the business. So what I did put down for you up here uh, is the length for fix that issue is um, 12 months. Uh, that is the right timing for us to make sure that we get consistency, but also is that we have enough time for you to hire people and build the systems. Now, uh, the, the funding needed, okay, guys, the funding needed, not the prices, the funding needed is 31K and it covers for all 12 months. Any question on that? No, no question. I mean, like, uh, I mean, I'm nowhere near able to afford that. Right. And, that, and, and and that's not a problem. So this this one is diffusing. Objection are not problem for me. I have to find a solution for him. So that's not a problem. I guess, uh, let's say, if, if we will have to hypothetically put the money aside and let's say we could fix that together, uh, I guess, like, would you do it though? More, well, money yeah, aside. Yeah, I mean, money aside, I mean, it, it, it like, I mean, you're the first person I've talked to, but yeah, I mean, it seems like a good program. Right, though, you, I'm the first person that you spoke the you spoke with, but let me ask, like, do you value time? Of course. Now, and I want to give an analogy, uh, and, uh, you know, I gave this one to my wife when I first met her, which is like, how many other people you have to meet until you find that one that you love? <laughs> I don't know. Right, because it, it, it doesn't actually make sense. But coming back of the program, though, why would you do it, though? I mean, you, uh, I mean, uh, you told me that I, the hiring process, right, that um, I can, the, the sales process seems to be part of it, and the messaging that you told me that I need to, to do. Right. So, I mean, those, those are probably the three things I like about the program right now. Well, though, but let's say we, we could possibly get those things together uh, with you. Like, what, what what would that give you? Different I mean, well, than that now. Right, right. I mean, well, I mean, you're talking like I'm at I'm at thirty thousand dollars a month, and the only way I can afford this is if I get to to fifty to sixty thousand. And uh, I mean that that's really the goal. Right. So let's say we, we could possibly help you out. Your main goal will be 50 to 60,000. But as you can understand, like money is just the driver, it's the tool. Though 
and I'm a big believer in mindset and pattern. Well, let me ask, like, why 60,000? Why six zero and not six one or six two? What that number means to you? Well, I mean, I was just thinking about like what I could do to afford this program and uh, also live the same lifestyle that I have. Right. So do you want to live the same lifestyle that you have? Well, I want to have a better lifestyle, but. Right. So a better lifestyle most of the times require different mindset, different action, diff but you have to put yourself in a different position. So money, and I do appreciate that money might be an issue for you, but would you open to look at different kind of solution? What do you because mean? I don't want, because I don't want that to be the problem. Right, okay, so what do you, what do you recommend? Well, 10%, let's say a fa fairly good percentage of clients, they look into different kind of option. Now, I don't want to bring a suggestion just yet, but which other option would you look into it for make sure that we can get to 60K so that you can get to a better lifestyle, lifestyle rather than being the same? I mean, what, what do you mean? Right, which other option, let's say, outside the money that you have right now, you you can look into it for make sure that you fix the cell systems, but you fi you fix the scalability, you get leads so that we can get to 60K. I mean, my, I, I would, I would put it on the credit card, but I'm, uh, I, I just don't have uh, the right credit. Right. Now, give me an idea. Be beside the right credit on the credit card, what do you feel is the most important things to do for not staying the same and change your situation and i can help you with that if you had yeah i mean like i, I mean i can ask my my partner right yes you could you yeah you could but uh, let's say she's not supportive about the funding forget that what are we gonna do then i mean i guess i i guess it would take me longer right how long though i, mean, I have no idea right that's, that's, that's your point of it, is understanding that what can we do now for make sure that we succeed tomorrow? So the most important aspect of changing where we are, if we're not happy with, which is what you were saying, is to commit. So what can we do today for make sure that tomorrow is different? <clears throat> I mean, can I put 500 bucks down? Uh, if we if we put five hundred bucks down and we commit to change, what can we look into the reef the in the rest? So, like from a, a payment plan, you're asking a, pay, a payment plan. Let's let's put the payment plan aside for a second, but give me an idea. Like, which other option are you looking into it? So I can kind of help because you mentioned the credit score, but uh, I, I mean, if I make a suggestion, what about a loan though, or so something different? Okay. Would you be open to that? Yeah. Right. So if you if you if you open, what we could do is we can put the five hundred dollars down, um, sign sign some sort of paperwork that can help you out. After what I can do together with you, look in different kind of option that can be uh, looking at your credit score or uh, what kind of loan can we get so that we can repay the program also a little bit faster, so you don't have to pay a lot of interest. Would you be open to that? Yeah. Right. So is getting into a position where you guide in a person through. And also me and you, we didn't have contests in terms of like right. skeleton right. system. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like <laughs> but getting getting to one point where I open a couple of doors and opening the couple of doors is like, okay, I'm going to down the mindset because I want the commitment. But I don't want to help the guy to be committed. It's like it's what he can do. Okay, so you want to put five hundred dollars down. I agree. So don't agree on bad behaviors on people. I, I hear a lot of people saying, well, I don't have the money for it. I agree, man. And they go overcome the objections. Like, don't agree. <laughs> don't agree what you say. I agree on good behaviors. So if he goes into a position where he's like, man, I, I want to put 500 dollars down. Also, if it's not enough for COVID to $31,000, put it down. Okay, man, I can do that. I Thanks, I appreciate you being committed. Empower the person, he's trying to do something. Also, don't drop straight away in the payment plan. I want the cash collection up front. That's the biggest mistake. Payment plan is my last resource. Cooling off period, love it or leave it, are my last resource. 
Yeah, I, put, I put people on love it or leave it period. If I really feel that there might be a chance that something might not work for them. If I have the conviction that you have five, five, five dollars, but you can make 150, I want you in for 12 months. It's not service for me to let you come in and, and drop like uh, after 30 days because you will be in fear again. Right, right, right. You get to a path. Yeah, no, I love that. So like, what, what do you say to somebody? Like, how, how do we handle that same objection? Because I think the like a lot of people here are going to be selling um, retainer-based stuff. So not a coaching program. Like, do you sell currently... Like, or do you remember selling like a $1,500 a month program where it's like done for you services like marketing where somebody may be selling like an insurance agent or real estate agent, or right. it's like, Hey, I'll give you 50 leads uh, for 1500 bucks and I'll do all this shit for you. Can that same uh, like commitment level work for a smaller business where it's like where you get them to go on the fun funding finance situation when you when you sell done for you product uh the commerce objection that you get you correct me if i'm wrong is oh can you work for me or like uh, what, what's what's my guarantee on that right okay that's the biggest one that you yeah. get <laughs> because like uh, you know yeah. it's not, but it's like bring them back to reality so if you give me like give, give me the objection of like oh what's my guarantee on that well, what, well, fuck, Marco. Like, I mean, I, I like everything you said, but what's my guarantee? And that's not a problem, man. But the, l- 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 let me say, like, you you ask me for a, for a guarantee. Like, is that a main reason why you're asking for that? Well, I mean, I've worked with so many different marketers that sound the same. And I mean, like, I just don't want to take the risk. I'd rather do nothing. So for everyone who's listening right now is using a method of thinking in com- is trying to judge me for someone that it was similar that i used to offer but is going to get the same results so what i'm going to do is reframe it take a listen man i totally understand where you're coming from and bad experience most of the times can get you to think in the same way or in a different way i'm not the one decided for that because memory is the element of understanding that you don't live in the past but you use the past to make the future decision. So let me ask, what if, you, what if you don't change that pattern? What if you always, when you're about to make a decision, you think, well, my previous company, you know, the previous things that I had didn't work. What would that lead you to? I mean, I would never, I would never advertise. Right. And also, like, for me, give you a guarantee will be a disservice. You know why? Why is that? Because I'm not basing this of commitment from you. You're basing this commitment on me. And the only true guarantee that you have in life is life or death. And one you show up or one you don't. (laughs) But it, it, it comes down to the level of understanding of, like, how important it is for you to not be like today. And what can you do today? for be better tomorrow so which one do you feel is the best step for you for where you are right now i mean i want to be better tomorrow all right and then you bring them into payment method and everything but you see how going into uh do are you asking that for a particular reason well i had bad experience in the past that's an objection guys we need to be better overcoming those objections and move them forward and make them that's a pattern so it's leading to something is like oh everyone is the same and i'm never gonna get leads He's asking you to you to prove themselves when they have to prove themselves that they got to change. Getting someone a program with a guarantee is like getting someone really impatient that doesn't want to learn. Right. No, I love that. And we got Eli here live. What's up, Eli? Oh, so, Eli. So, that's, that's my mentor. There you go. So really quickly, for those of you guys that didn't hear this before, if you guys do hashtag Eli right now, all 25 of you, right now at the same exact time, hashtag Eli. And then right after that, hashtag Marco, you're all gonna get a ticket on me for the, on Saturday for these guys. Um, I'm buying every one of your guys' tickets. Um, You're definitely uh, available to buy your own. If you don't, it's on me. And everybody that does buy it, um, I'm gonna double the investment just uh, for charity. So if a hundred of you guys buy it that end up watching this before Saturday, um, I'll double it. I don't know how we're going to quantify that. So I guess I'll just 
give you guys whatever twenty five hundred dollars in donation, and then we'll figure it out later. Oh, it means a lot. <laughs> if, yeah. if, 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 if like Eli is in the audience, um, just want to say to people that don't know Eli, Eli is my biggest mentor. He's uh, totally changed the way how I see cell. Um, he he really gave me the idea of like what patterns and behavior people are. So he's the man. If you're trying to understand what overcoming fear is and really what becoming better in life is, he's an amazing speaker for himself, probably the best in the world. So he's a great yeah. guy from first friends. I, I met, <laughs> j- just some context. Like I met Eli and I didn't know who the fuck he was. And he showed up at this event in California at Hub 101 in Los Angeles area. And when he walked out, I'm like, God, oh, who's this like fit guy? Like, there's no way he's selling shit here. I'm like, dude, he's so ripped. He's like, this is not real. Then he commanded a room. I no, no fucking joke. Like, there was like 60 people in the room. Not one person looking at their cell phone. Not one person not paying attention to this guy. And there's 60 people on you. I wouldn't doubt if he sold like 150 tickets to oh, a show with 60 people. Like I, I actually, I remember I walked, I, I, I left the, cause I'd already bought a ticket to a, to, to business mastery for Tony Robbins. And he was, he was selling, uh, Unleash the Power Within. And, uh, I actually went home, I drove back and I like pulled up right next to his car while he was pulling out and I gave him my credit card. I'm like, I want to just give you my credit card. Cause I feel bad leaving. I'm like, you were so good that I actually have to buy a ticket for somebody else. Yeah, That's he's he, yeah. he's he's a master. What he does is um, he made a huge difference in the way how I see transaction. Like uh, there is a there was an element of like selling, still selling people, um, of like um, on being com- most of the times being combative. When I when I went through when he coached us uh, because he coached through a little bit sales never through a couple of uh, I think two months is when I really kind of opened the door to like, okay, there is another level to it. There's another level to it. That level is like, let's realize what patterns and behaviors are, what mindset is like, what trade is like, what those kind of fee, what those kind of things are. So, and he master it. He's capable to do the level where he can jump in a room with a thousand people and make them jump. And that's, that's a gift from God. <laughs> if you believe I've, it or not. I've never seen such a thing. Like, I mean, I know Tony Robbins is good, but like you expected that from Tony Robbins where Eli is like, yeah. you're just like, you're just dumbfounded. You're like, holy fuck. Like this guy's mind blowing. Cause you didn't expect it. Yeah. He's uh, for, yeah. For, for me as right now is the best coach for people. And he's about to release a program for self from stage. I'm not sure about that, but you, you, you already asked my credit card. <laughs> yes. I have my great card for that. So, but he's about to release a program, so I'm super excited for that as well. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm honored to have uh, Eli, you, Matt on here. I mean, do we have time for one more objection? Yeah, I'm just gonna rig up my hat on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so the context is gonna be this. It's gonna be, um, uh, I mean, any industry. I, you pick it, but the objection is gonna be. You know what? Like, give give me a week. Let me think about it. Right, right. So, and, I mean, and, and that's not a problem. Now, give me an idea. Though, like, uh, what would change from uh, today until next week, if if anything? Um, well, I mean, I, I just don't make decisions on the spot. Right. Though, let, let me ask. And I, I might say something about. I really don't want to offend you, but I feel like it's not really serving your purpose. Thinking that particular way or not making decision right on the spot. Like, do you feel that got you where you are right now? Do I feel like where it would be my goal? No, do you feel like that got you to be where you are right now in life and in business? Thinking that way. I mean, like... I mean, well, I mean, I feel like I'm doing pretty good and like, I like to be patient on my decisions. Right, though, that's, uh, that's, that's the thing though. Do you want to do pretty good or you want to do what you want to do? Because, there is a, because I'm a big believer on the way people speak to other people, the way how they speak within themselves. So pretty good, I'm okay. But why did you, why did you open this business in the first place? For be good or for be excellent? I mean, yeah, I want to be excellent. So if you don't want to be excellent, 
what do you feel your mindset has to be for be excellent, for have your business to be excellent, for walk and think like someone that is excellent, but not because you, you're not, but because right now you're not, you're right, just right now, you're not thinking that way. And it's not serving your purpose, brother. Right. What do you recommend? You see, like right now you're in back the frame when he has to tell me like, okay, what, what I should do. Well, what, what I feel you should do, Raul, is really assessing because I'm, I still got an objection right there, which is like, I don't think there can be money, time and value guys, okay? So for me, sign him, I could sign him, sign him up now, I get a refund uh, in two weeks or in a week time. I want the guy to be successful in the program. So what I'm gonna do is like, now with a more easier frame, I, I mean, for me is really assessing what, what the real, thinking about it is in a week so give me a little bit more understanding so i can even see if i can help you out so i'm sorry like say the question again yeah so you 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 give me the think I about did. it okay? so yeah. now i want to channel it so i want to understand if it's money time and value so i i guess like give me tell me Raul, like what what exactly was the main factor that you needed to think about it well i mean i, I gotta i gotta just like check like my, my finances to see if like I can afford it because I have a bills. And then also I got to, I mean, there's, if I have other options, I got to look at that too. But would you open to see, see that just small part from a different perspective? Yeah. So are the bills, are they not having the money, the problem or the cause of the problem? Oh, I mean, not having the money is probably the cause of the problem. Yeah, but what, what what's the real problem though? Well, I mean, I need to I need to actually get more customers. Right. And what can we do today for make sure that we can start getting from customers from tomorrow so that you can go and buy X, Y, and Z or get them whatever they tell you they get. Okay. Right, right. I mean, well, I mean, I need uh, I need I mean to be able to close more deals faster really right though you mentioned the mindset before you know you were, we were talking about kind of um having the mindset of doing it tomorrow doing it today now if you will have to see from the mindset as i told you of excellence what would you do today so that you can start being congruent tomorrow since you want to start closing more deals or so asking to your people to to come invest in you you see how why you're around <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess I would, uh, I would need to practice a lot more and I would need a coach. Right. Now, there's two, there's two ways that you can say it. You can either, and, and I'm more than willing to let you do it because I'm not a pushy person, but I like to see people overcome their own concern. I'll let you thinking about it. Yeah. I'll let you act. It has to be, the decision has to be in base of what you think is best for you, in base of what you think. Right. I, 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 was that a question? Were you in role play still? Yeah. Or was, uh, yeah. That's that's how I that's how I asked them. That's how I asked them at the end. Like I asked them, oh, if you if your concern is to ask to your wife, I either let you do it, or I either let you take the best decision that you can take, which is probably to commit. But it's your choice, not mine. Because right. I'm putting I'm putting the cells out of me, guys. Like I know this is super risky. But I've learned that doing it that way works because I have no refunds whatsoever. Because it is their decision. If I let them, I can persuade everyone to jump right now and clap their hands, but they're not doing out of their tent, intent, but doing by, by intent. And when I'm going to be gone, because realistically, I'm the sales guy. I can't be there all the time. I have to end them off to a coach and let them succeed. That has to be their choice to move on. All right. No, I love it, man. I mean, who, who, who out here right now of, of you 28 people that are still hanging out with us after, I don't know how long we've been on here. Uh, who enjoyed that right there? Like, can we get a hashtag Marco? I actually do. Hashtag Marco is the man. <laughs> Let's get some Marco is the fucking well, man. I, believe it or not, I'm super shy. Like when I, when there is these lives and things like, but when you get me in the yeah. cell, you get me in the element. And I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I, I remember when I asked Marco to do this, he's like, "Oh, let me let me get Matt on here." I'm like, "Well, I asked you, dude." Like, I'm like, "I don't, we don't need Matt." I'm like, "We need just you and I, man." But no, Matt was an absolute fucking jam, a pleasure. 
um, because like you guys are just amazing to, to, to listen to. Um, but what, what I want everybody out here to, to really fucking understand is that this is a learned pattern. This is a learned behavior. I mean, nobody was born a natural bone born salesperson. There may be some gen, uh, uh, genetics in, in like athletes are being ripped or like good looking like Marco and Eli are. Uh, but, but as far as, uh, learning how to talk, I know plenty of people that have like political parents that speak on stage for a living, who, like their children who I grew up with are fucking mutes. They suck. They're, they're terrible. They're, they're awful at speaking. So genetics has nothing to do with sales. It's a learned choice, right? Well, once a, a, a wise man told me this thing, like about be, being the unicorn or being really good at selling is something like, man, there is like, People they're right now playing the NBA like Le- LeBron James. They're, they're unicorn, but they still train every day. They still learn. They still read books. And after these people, some person that decide to take a different path. They were skillful like LeBron James, but when when they were 15, 16, 17, they made other choices. They made choices to hang out with their friends. They made choices to not go sleep early and, and go to practice. And that's why right now they work somewhere else so they don't make it to an NBA. And he's the guy that tells you what if, what if, what if. You don't want to be that guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't be that guy. <laughs> we, we all have those friends that were going to go pro in the league and they're not fucking pro and they're broke as shit. And yeah. er, everything's not their fault. They're the victim. And uh, yeah. yeah, we all got a choice, man. We, we, we all got a fucking choice. We all got a choice. Yeah, because I mean, like my last thing before we leave here is like, I, like the analogy that I have for circumstances is like, look at look at Kobe Bryant versus Dwayne Wade. Like, I mean, I love Kobe Bryant to death. So sad that he, he that car or, or, or the helicopter crash yeah. happened here in Calabasas. Um, but I mean, he had everything going for him, a professional father, like b- growing up in Italy. And then we have Dwayne Wade, one of 13 people that like for all we know like his destiny was at best being a really good drug dealer possibly in that situation right but then this motherfucker of one of 13 single mom they both met in the middle where they wanted the best two different circumstances one had opportunity one had everything going against them and then boom they both have the same passion and desire so i think that that's the most important thing is that inner drive and you got to find that that focus from one person uh, whether whoever changes your life whoever has that snap of a finger whether it's this live eli marco matt whomever uh i mean you're, you're one choice away from literally taking over a stage literally controlling your income you know and i don't want to make it too long but i'm i'm a big fan of tom brady and you talk about sport and everything tom brady wasn't the best like at all he became the best so and that resent a lot with my story because I come from like a country where most of the time, so I'm from Europe, okay? And then you capped or whatever your family does. If, if, you're, if your family is a doctor, you're gonna be a doctor. If your dad is, a, he, is a, he, he owns a shop, you're gonna own the shop. So it's like really growing into it. You decide to grow into it and to learn, but to do more. And that's what I can advise, uh, take away from everyone in the audience is if he's from Raul or is from heaven, learn because all the time that you're spending by thinking about it, you're never going to get it back. So if you got to get on a call with someone, get on a call with someone. Yeah, definitely. So if you want to change, change, the choice is yours. So um, everybody here, before we leave, I see that there's 27 people live. Can we get like some more love? So this, this is like, I want this to be the most like active live I've ever done. I think our record was like 400 comments. So if you guys can break this commentary by just dropping like your, your biggest takeaway, like all 26 of you now, drop your biggest takeaway. And then last time, so I can go back through this, I'm gonna have my, my assistant tomorrow, literally reach out to every one of you guys that showed up here with any sort of comment. I'm going to get you a ticket to their live. If their live is already full, you'll get the replay. Is that okay with them? If like, if, if you guys are full, I can buy them a ticket and give them a replay. All right, Eli, you cool with that? If you're still here, I think Eli, I don't know if Eli's here. Eli's a busy motherfucker. He's probably playing and taking over the world. So I'm just glad he dropped in for a minute, but, um, but anyways, like, so like, what was your biggest takeaway? And, uh, and if you want a ticket, hashtag ticket. 
actually everybody do hashtag ticket that'll make it so much easier for me um just so i can go through this i might when i say my assistant i'm literally talking about myself i am the assistant <laughs> so it'll make it easier otherwise all you guys aren't getting shit <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, yeah. Marco, man, the, the, like as much voice notes as we've exchanged, I mean, nothing beats this, man. Like, I mean, I can't thank you enough. Uh, I, I want to tell you thanks. To I want to tell you thanks. Uh, you know, for me, as having an accent, like everyone can hear, and from the if you hear the replay as well, there is no sub subtitle on this, so you get it how it is. Um, is getting my out of my comfort zone but i really want to appreciate you to give me the platform to at least speak with your, with your guys in the group uh, you know in your community and i hope that everyone can take at least one thing and make 2k so they can feed their family feed their kids or whatever they have because that's what, why we're doing what we're doing so absolutely really. absolutely thank you so much and by the way guys with this ticket you guys are going to be supporting an absolutely amazing cause it's going to be for the fires in Australia, the brush fires. This is going to go to all the families. Everything that Marco, Eli, and Matt are going to be doing are all going 100% to charity. Chances are they're going to be even covering like all the credit card processing costs that they don't even know about. So they're going to be donating a lot of their time, energy, and money for, for everybody. So I don't normally drive people out of my group to say go to somebody, but like this is what I'm like i'm passionate about changing people's lives myself i know my partner cody is too um i i 100 wholeheartedly believe in you guys and i've been firsthand witness to how amazing all three of these guys are otherwise i would not have asked them to come on thank you all right thank you my man all right guys thank you for joining us i appreciate you guys staying up late uh being up here i know that some of you guys are east coast overseas so thank you guys for your time Keep dropping your comments. I mean, put your own notes and your and your own takeaways in the comments because when you go back to this live and see your own comments, you'll have some sort of memory in your own head of what it is you actually want to take away versus all the bullshit of watching this shit and not doing anything about it. Okay. So that really is a ninja hack. Write your own notes in the